recent video, we looked at a small business retirement plan called a Simplified Employee Pension Plan, or SEP, where the owner of a business establishes and contributes to SEP IRAs for themselves and their employees. However, there is another type of retirement plan for small business that, despite its name, is more complicated than the SEP, but gives employees more options when it comes to their retirement savings. I'm the Tax Geek, and here are Savings Incentive Match Plans for Employees of Small Employers, or Simple Plans, Oversimplified. Many aspects of the simple are identical to or very similar to the SEP, so I won't be going into detail on these similarities. Those details can be found in my video on SEPs, which is linked in the top right corner or in the video description. A business may establish a simple plan if it has no more than 100 employees who earned more than $5,000 in compensation. Like a SEP, a simple IRA plan establishes individual IRAs for each participant. A simple can also be set up as a 401k plan, where contributions go into a central fund and each participant has an account within that central fund. For the purposes of oversimplification, this video will concentrate on simple IRA plans because they are, well, simpler. Just as with SEP IRAs, simple IRAs are traditional IRAs, but not subject to the seven dollars to $8,000 contribution limits of ordinary IRAs. The significant difference between SEP and simple plans is that unlike the SEP, where only the employer contributes to the plan, both the employer and the employee may make contributions. The employee makes contributions through salary reduction, where the employee voluntarily relinquishes part of their pay as a contribution to their simple IRA. The deferred amount does not show up in Box 1 on the employee's W-2 and is not subject to either federal or state income tax. It is, however, subject to Social Security and Medicare taxes. Employees can defer up to $16,000 in salary or wages into their simple IRAs. Employees over age 50 can defer an additional $3,500 as a catch-up contribution. Most employees elect to defer a certain percentage of their gross earnings, not to exceed these limits. Unlike a SEP, where employers had discretion over how much should contribute to the SEP IRAs, even electing to make no contribution if they wished, employers do not have that discretion when it comes to simple IRAs. Employers are required to make either one of the following contributions. A matching contribution of up to 3% of compensation for all employees who make elective deferrals, or a non-elective contribution of 2% of compensation for all eligible employees, regardless of whether or not they make elective deferrals. All simple IRA contributions, whether they are employer contributions or employee deferrals, are fully vested, which means they can be withdrawn by the employee at any time, but the withdrawals are subject to income tax and a potential 10% early withdrawal penalty. Simple IRAs are available to all employees who are expected to make at least $5,000 during the current year and who received at least $5,000 in compensation during at least one of the two previous years. Employers can reduce or even eliminate this compensation requirement, but they cannot require higher amounts of compensation to participate. A simple plan is set up using Form 5305 Simple, which spells out the terms of the plan. This form is never sent to the IRS. Instead, a copy of the form is provided to each employee who is eligible to participate in the plan. The bottom half of page 3 of the form can be filled out by the employee and returned to the employer if the employee wishes to contribute to his or her simple IRA through salary reduction. To show how all this works, let's revisit sole proprietor Howie and his plumbing company Flushed with Pride from the original SEP video. Instead of setting up a SEP, Howie instead decides to set up a simple to allow his employees to contribute to their retirement accounts if they wish. You might recall that Harry has four employees, Darren, Aaron, Karen, and Freddie. Darren, Aaron, and Karen have worked for Howie for some time now, but Freddie was hired late last year. Howie set up the plan with the standard requirements. There's no question that Darren, Aaron, and Karen can participate, but Freddie was hired late last year and didn't receive compensation of at least $5,000. But just as before, Darren had compensation of $65,000, Aaron had compensation of $52,000, and Karen had compensation of $71,000. Darren decides to contribute 2% of his compensation, or $1,300, and Karen contributes 6% of hers, or $4,260. However, Aaron declines to make any contribution this year. 
If Howie decides to make 3% matching contributions, Howie matches Darren's 2% contribution in full, putting another $1,300 into his simple IRA and giving him a balance in his account of $2,600. Howie matches 3% of Karen's 6% contribution, adding another $2,130 to her simple IRA for a total of $6,390. Aaron receives no contribution from Howie, leaving him with a zero balance in his account. If instead Howie made 2% non-elective contributions of compensation for each eligible employee, Darren would still receive a contribution of $1,300. Karen's contribution would reduce to $1,420, giving her a balance of $5,680, and Aaron would receive a contribution of $1,040. For Howie's own contribution, he decides to contribute $7,000 to his own simple IRA. If he matches contributions using the 3% rule, he matches his contribution by taking 3% of his net self-employment income of $136,000, less the matches he made to his employees' accounts of $3,460, his adjustment for self-employment tax of $9,365, and his own elective deferral. This matching contribution comes to 3% of $116,205 or $3,486. Please note that when using the 3% rule, unless Howie made an elective deferral to his own account, he would not be eligible for a matching contribution. If Howie makes non-elective contributions of 2% of compensation, using the same math as before, Howie's non-elective contribution would be 2% of $115,898 or $2,318. Matching contributions of 3% are considered the default in a simple plan, but the decision to use 3% matching contributions or 2% non-elective contributions can be made on a year-by-year -year basis. However, notice must be given to all eligible employees if the employer decides to make non-elective contributions. Simple contributions are reported in much the same way as SEP contributions. For a Schedule C filer, all the employee contributions, both elected deferral and employer contributions, are reported on line 19 of Schedule C. The owner's contribution to a simple IRA, again both elective and employer, are reported on line 16 of page 2 of Schedule 1. On the Schedule C, total wages on line 26 are reduced by the employee deferrals to the SEP IRAs, and the difference, plus the employer contributions, are added together and reported on line 19. On the employee's Form W-2, the Box 1 wages are reduced by their elected deferral and the retirement plan box is checked. The amount of the deferral is reported on the employee's W-2 in Box 12, coded S. Reporting simple plans on partnership and corporation returns is exactly the same as reporting a SEP, so refer to that video if you'd like more detail. Once again, we've just managed to scratch the surface when it comes to simple plans. Additional information and resources on this topic are linked in the video description. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who could find it useful. Subscribe to the channel to see more oversimplifications of our overcomplicated tax system. And your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcome in the comments space below. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.